Well, good afternoon, good morning. Welcome, Bernita people, we're here. Hi, you're at the webinar. Thanks for joining us. My name's Adrian. I'm the National Product Educator at Bernita Canada. And today we have ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Hi, everyone. I'm Deb, and I am also a National Product ed Educator for Bernina. Did you know we could have more than one? I did not know <laughs> until you hired me. I know. I thought so, you were only allowed one. It's pretty great. We have a pretty great team, and just missing today is Roberta in Alberta. Hi, Roberta. We miss you. Hopefully, we'll come out and see you soon. So should we get right into today's topic? We should, but first of all, I want to say thank you for inviting me to do this webinar with you. Um, you know we use these books all the time for reference, and we always go to the index, and we look up what we want, and yep. then we get the information, and that's it. Yep. And pretty much that's what I've done with these books all the For the time. last year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when you invited me to do this, I actually read them cover to cover. Yep. Just you know, to appear like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I read them cover to cover. And wow, there's a lot of information in these books, way, I, way more than I actually knew. And we have a lot of resources to get information yeah. from, but uh, it's all in the books. We really don't need yeah. anything else. I'm really glad though it's still contained in your brain because it's not necessarily in my brain. I'm rather nerdy. Okay. <laughs> awesome, I'm glad I found my people. Okay, yeah. so oh, one more thing. Yeah. Great. So I just wanted to throw in that for anybody who doesn't own a Bernina, you really don't need to own a Bernina. There's so much information. Um, and the biggest, my biggest takeaway from reading all these books is I wish I really had these books before I actually purchased any of my machines. Yeah. So there's so much information in them. So even if you don't own a Bernina, you are uh, gonna get a lot out of these books if you, if you have them. That's great. So that's what they can look forward to all yeah. webinar. I do want to remind you, if you're having technical difficulties, if the baby is crying, if the dog has to go out to the bathroom, today's webinar will be recorded and the recording link will be sent to you uh, in a couple of hours when I get it ready. Feel free to share that recording link with any of your friends that you think would enjoy this information as well. It's not a secret. We're not mm -hmm. keeping the secret. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have any questions, reach out to your local Bernina dealer, send us a question on Facebook, Instagram, yep. or on Bernina.com at the contact us button at the bottom. Do you think we can put it on our YouTube channel too? I'm going to try. All right. You know, that's a lot yeah, of cross I, I, tech. That's a big ask. I want to talk <laughs> about it right now. What I do want to talk about is our very first <clears throat> book. Let's, uh, let's talk about the books in general and we'll move on to our first book. So, uh, in general, Deb wants you to know that she compiled the list and the Bernina books are on average around 200 pages, mm -hmm. right? 150 yep. something yep. to 200 and something. They're full of historical information, techniques, and all kinds of detailed information that you can use to get great results. The pictures are amazing. I'm, yes, glad they that, are. I'm glad that the pages are a little bit like glossy, yep. drill proof a little yep. bit. Yeah. And also like they're just so inspirational. Some of the yeah. photos, I just wanted to run to my sewing machine to try so many techniques out as I was seeing the pictures. So. Yeah, it, was, it makes you really <clears throat> yeah. happy to sew. Yeah. It's really cool. Lots of overviews of the machines in each book. If you are interested in a Bernina machine, it shows you exactly what each machine can do. Information not just on the machines though, and the techniques on notions, accessories, tools, things you'll need to get these projects done. It's mm -hmm. all in there. And I found that information would have been so helpful when I started doing these things because I would have saved so much time and money. <laughs> it's making me laugh, Deb, because every time I do a class, I always say, I make all these mistakes, I find things out for you so you don't have to wait. So right. <laughs> I think this is a really good tip. For people if you don't need to wait right if you right. want to learn all about searchers find out about yeah. them today in yeah. the books yeah um lots of charts you and i love a oh chart my God, or a graph charts. and of course there's troubleshooting and most importantly indexes and glossaries for yeah. us to learn more things the yeah. glossary is great because there's so much terminology with all of the different things yeah. and and just to know the terminology is I mean, you use words that I don't know what they are and I have to look them up all is the time. Is that what that rustling sound is? is? Oh, is. okay, <laughs> she's looking it up when I say, you know, seam allowance, she's like finding it. Seam what? <laughs> <laughs> she's joking. Um, so of course, we wanna talk about one of our favorite books. Ta-da! The Big Book of Feet, the Mac Daddy, the first mm -hmm, of the feet. Mm -hmm. Let's look at our slide that Deb lovingly prepared for this you. This is the one that I probably refer to the most 
because we get so many questions on feet and how to use them and what are the best settings. Yeah. And so I find that I refer to this most just so that I can give good information out. Yeah, I would say multiple times a week I'm looking at this, even when I'm not sewing. Yeah. Yeah. So what's great about it is you can look it up, you can look up each foot, just about the foot, mm -hmm. or you can mm -hmm. look up about a technique. Yeah. Like let's say we wanted to do um, edge stitching. Mm -hmm. We could look up edge stitching in the index and it would take us to the page about the appropriate foot or feet. Yep, feet. Feet. Oh, feet, thank you, feet. English grammar <laughs> lesson. So you can learn new techniques. You can, of course, learn the settings of this. So that's the cut and dry stuff. So I'm gonna move this over to Deb because Deb has done a recent um, reading and inspection of this book. Um, what were your takeaways from this book, Deb? So I found out that we are both really nerdy. <laughs> and so for any of you who have the book and for those of you who don't, there's a schematic right here. I don't know if you could see it. Oh yeah, the black and white schematic. Yeah, yep, there's just a black tilt it down. So, so it shows you what the bottom of the foot looks like, each presser yep. foot. And that, I just wish I had the box, our you know education box of feet with me when yep. I was going through this book, because I just wanted to have a look at the foot and just yep. really understand why, why the bottom of the feet are designed that way. Yep. So, I mean, the bottom of the foot is where it's touching your project. Yeah. It's where the magic is really happening. Yeah. So it's kind of key. It gives me a really good insight as to why the settings are the settings when I look right. at that schematic. Right. Right. So let's look at a couple of feet. If you have any questions, <clears throat> by the way, just type them into the questions panel. And Deb and I will be looking at them periodically. And we'll try to give you answers for your questions. All right, let's take a quick look at the bottom of some feet. So if you ever take a class with me, Deb, I'm always telling people to look at the bottom of the feet. It, mm -hmm. It's kind of weird, but it is where all the action yeah. is happening. So Kathy asked uh, yeah. where the schematic is on. It's There's a schematic oh, let me for show you. every foot. Let me show you. I'll put it on the close-up so you can see. So this, Deb randomly chose page 34, 34C. Oh, you can see it there. And then there's the schematic here. It shows the bottom of each foot and it shows the indentations or any other special features of the foot. It's awesome. Deb is not even stating it well enough. But what's interesting about that is if you look at the bottom of the foot, you can see that this is a number one foot and it's got sort of some cutouts here. And that's to help the fabric pass uh, up to the needle. That's the opening for the needle and beyond. And I was trying to use this foot, Deb, with some decorative stitches and it kept getting caught um, and I wasn't getting a nice smooth satin stitch. So I went to my uh, book and it suggested for decorative stitches to use something that has more of an open groove at the back to allow those satin stitches to pass right through and bingo, I had better results. Mm. So that's kind of the thing that you can see in the book. It also tells you the difference between our C feet and our D feet, um, our hopping feet for embroidery and quilting. I mean, you can't really get, there's so much information. There there's is. so much information, yeah. And another part that I really love is there's a section here with the technique setting. Do you want to put this on? I'll show you and, and Deb will talk about that. So the us. technique setting actually tells you how you should set up your machine for, this might not be the best example, but. Oh, let me switch <laughs> to my favorite foot. Which is my favorite foot, Deb? Hardest working foot in Bernina. Number 10. Number 10? Because it's not my favorite. Well, it's maybe it's not the splashiest foot, but it's the hardest working <clears throat> foot. Yeah. And I'm the hardest working educator, so <laughs> shameless self -worth. So here's number 10. Yeah. So it shows you how you set up your machine. Right. So with the stitch width, stitch length, and then it tells you what the technique is. So it gives you a lot of information so that you have a good guideline to where to start. And then if you need to change it up you can change it up to whatever you need it to be, but at least you have a guideline as to where you can start to use these stitches. That's a really good point because sometimes you don't even want to start a project because it's so daunting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about, edge yep. stitching. Okay, so then I go grab my number 10, I look up edge stitching and it yeah. tells me the settings and then I might need to move my needle over left or right. Yeah. That's yeah. really amazing. And it makes me feel like I have my finger on the pulse of the sewing world. Yeah, and, it, and it's really applicable um, when you use the, um, like something like a cording foot and you're not sure what to set your machine to. Yeah. Um, th so I found that it was super useful. Yeah. When something I was 
totally out of the <clears throat> ordinary. Yeah. yeah. I mean, on our machines, I guess we have the creative consultant, mm -hmm. but you also have to know what technique you're about to try. Right. To use the creative yeah. consultant. Yeah. So before we move on, yep. do you have a favorite uh, foot? Well, other I, than the edge stitch. Okay, do you love number 10? Um, you know, I do love free motion couching. Can I steal yours? Yeah, um, yeah that was one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> number 43, if you don't have a free motion couching foot, you're not living. No. <laughs> it's really fun to like couch and do free motion at the same time. You yeah. can do it on quilting and on garments and beds. And, and even when you're not good at free motion, that couching foot, it just hides all the, all the not perfectness <laughs> makes, us look, makes us look like we know what we're doing yeah the yarn yeah. right the stitches kind of yeah. hide in the yarn or the ribbon that yeah. You're yeah. yeah 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 so if you have any questions about feet just shoot them in the questions panel and we'll try to try to look at them oh, do you have what, any questions uh, what yet? is your favorite foot and why so i'll say what my favorite i love the leather roller because well main I like the feet that give really impressive results and are really easy to use. Yeah. So um, the leather roller, I find that gives really impressive quilting. That's the one that looks like a, like a little unicycle. Like a little, yeah. You know, yeah. But I love it for quilting because it gives you really smooth, wavy lines. And I didn't put a lot of work into it. Yep. It just kind of does it on its own. Yeah. Um, another one that I like is the couching foot. Yeah. But a lot of the ones that just give you a lot of really impressive results yeah. with like little work. It's true that that leather roller one is great and I use it on bags for sticky stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or you can even top stitch a zipper and get really close. Yeah, yeah. I could write a book. <laughs> I don't need to. I don't need to. There is a book. There is a book. <laughs> awesome. All right mm -hmm. so any other foot questions? I think we're doing okay. We're gonna maybe move on to um, one of our true loves Deb. Um, somebody's only seen a small window. Do you know how they Are you on a phone? Like if you're on a phone, um, just turn your phone the other way and swipe to the other window. Is anybody else having technical difficulties? Um, that, that was it. And then um, Kathy is asking if there's a reason to have a 10 and a 10D. Oh, okay. So you would find this more information on this in the big book of feet. So for example, a number 10 foot has a number 10, a 10C and a 10D. 10 without a number after it is usually for a 5.5 millimeter opening. Thanks, Deb. Uh, C is for the nine millimeter feet and a 10 D is for dual feed. So for example, I sew a lot on my 830 machine, which is a nine point, a nine millimeter machine. And I have a, a 10 C to use regularly. And I have a 10 D because I like to use it with dual feed on bags, leather and stuff like that. The 10 would be very narrow and might not work perfectly with your feed dogs. It would probably work, but not be as effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So check out information <clears throat> with your local Bernina dealer. They'll help you get the, the right foot or what else could we use to get the right foot? A digital, a digital support would be the Bernina, my accessories mm -hmm. app, yeah. part of the, part of the new app, the updated app that you can get from the Google Play Store or um, the Apple App Store, and you can load it directly onto your smartphone, your tablet, and this is basically a mobile version of our Bernina.com website, and then at the bottom there is a, a thing on accessories there. If you need more help with that, ask your local Bernina dealer, do a quick Google search. We did a, a, a video on this on our yeah. Bernina Besties on, on Bernina Canada YouTube. Any other questions? What number is the leather roller again? 55. 55, that's it. I yeah. You, you need a number 55. 55. It's amazing. Uh, what is the number of the foot used for the satin decorative stitch? 20, 20C or 20D. 20C is my favorite. I love these questions. I could do this all day, but we we must move on to embroidery, right? Oh, if somebody wants you to just mention the app again. Oh, the app is called, um, it's the Bernina app. So if you go to... Google Play or the Apple App Store, type in Bernina, you'll get um, the latest version of the Bernina app. Cool. If you have any questions, you probably have my email. Just shoot me an email and Deb and I will help you. Great. So now I'm going to move on to embroidery. Goodness gracious. Um, I can't believe <clears throat> you can still see the words in this book because we have used this book all the time. It talks about different embroidery methods. It also talks about does what's a good design, how to get a design, how to get it onto your machine, how to buy one. Mm -hmm. it talks about stabilizers. Oh my God, we could do a week lesson yep. on stabilizers, yep. other supplies that you need. And then of course, 
do you need to edit a design, how to place the design accurately, different techniques, and of course, being able to embroider on any fabric. Mm -hmm. So let's see what Deb has to say about her second favorite book. I don't know. <laughs> They're all our favorites. You know, yeah. you're going to hear me say that I love these books a lot because as I read through them, I, you know, I just couldn't say enough good things. I mean, you must have been laughing at me every day when don't I came in. Don't know how many texts I got. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing, Deb. Yeah. Great. <laughs> but you didn't know everything. I didn't I know everything. I was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So this for sure is one of the books where I really, really wish I had before I started mm. embroidery. Um, you know, we were just talking before this webinar about the changes I would have made in my decisions um, yeah. had I read this book first. Yeah. Um, there's so much information on not only embroidery, but stabilizers and thread and all the things that you could possibly need. And um, my, fav my favorite part of these books, which I still refer to, are um, there's so many charts, but there's so many of them that have to do with um, what what combination of design, fabric, and stabilizer to you. Oh. And so you know that the combination of those three things are, are what give you the best results. Let me show you an example. Yeah. So if you're <clears throat> doing a very thick design like this guy, right? This is a tulip pink design from Embroidery Online, Scissor Tail, I believe. Scissor, Scissor tail. tail. And it's a very thick embroidery. So what is the best fabric? I want to do it on a jeans jacket right. so what is what, the best stabilizer to mm -hmm. use and then whether or not uh, a densely stitched design would work on mm. on a fabric like this yep. or if you need something a little bit lighter we do love a matrix or a a chart i do yeah okay I do. I <laughs> we do. do really love that <laughs> so that's the kind of thing that when you're trying something new like this was the first time i tried embroidering mm -hmm. on denim how am i going to prepare the fabric properly so that the design i mean the designs are amazing i want them to show off perfectly yeah. right and I don't have a second denim jacket, so I want to get it right the first time. I don't usually have a lot of time to sew. So yes. It's important to get it right, as close to right as possible the first time. And that really does help me with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and before this book was out, I mean, honestly, there was the only way that I could figure out what the best way to stitch mm -hmm. something is trial and error. Yeah. And so that meant a lot of wasted fabric, a lot of wasted stabilizers. Time. Um, time. So, yeah. so with this book... I at least have a good guideline as a starting point, mm -hmm. and then I can tweak things along the way if I need yeah. to. Yeah, I think Deb brought up a couple of great points. Uh, number one, you really don't need a Bernina for this machine. It is such a compilation of information. Um, there are a bunch of technique placement type yeah. ideas yeah. that it is a little bit more specific to Bernina and Burnett. Don't forget about our Burnett 70 and 79 embroidery machines. Um, but if you didn't have a Bernina, this would still be an amazing book for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have a Bernina and it has embroidery capability, but you're not sure if you want to take that step and get your embroidery module, Deb suggests you buy the book, read all about all the things you can do and how fun it is. It's really kind of our favorite thing to add embroidery to everything. Yeah. And, and yeah. all the things you need as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that I thought was really important was, um, stitch design. Yep. So for anybody who does embroider, you know that if you buy a poorly uh, set up design, mm. um, it, you know, there's just so many things wrong with it. The sequencing is wrong or the stitch quality is poor. Yep. Um, so it talks a lot about stitch, uh, stitch designs and mm -hmm. how to find a good one and that sort of thing. Yeah. So I, I really love that about this book. Yep. I mean, it would have probably saved me a lot of Yep. time and money once again to you know be able to yeah. buy things of good quality and just know what I'm looking for when I'm buying these things. I think another important thing is it touches on in embroidery uh, when you might want to consider software. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to get embroidery software right at the beginning. It right. might be something you want to grow into. There's free software, there's intermediate level software, and yeah, then there's sort of sure. the full on digitizing, making your own design software yeah. so that's covered in there too yeah lots of room to grow yeah but it shows you everything from how to just do a plain embroidery like i was showing you to how to hoop unusual items like a shoe tongue you can do something like that talks about unusual mm -hmm. substance or substrates like that how to make this is deb's little camper she's going to go camping in the next weekend um this is made in different pieces and in this camper yeah yeah in this one it's called um freestanding applique because it's mostly fabric um, why we like applique is because 
this is pink from fabric, not from stitches, even though there's stitches to embellish it. Um, she's got some freestanding lace, which is just thread. It's just thread and stabilizer. That's all that's left there after. Pretty amazing. And then you get to put it together with these cute little buttonette type of things. Embroidery applique is probably my favorite kind of so embroidery. Fast, right? It's so fast and it's so impressive. Yeah. I made this cool little <clears throat> gingerbread house, same technique as Deb's, uh, same idea. And you can even get really cool projects that are made entirely in the hoop. So this is a zippered pouch that's lined. It's got a design on it. The whole thing was made in one embroidery hoop. This is called an in the hoop project. We do a lot of talking about this. You can learn all about it in the book on the website at oesd.com or embroidery.com. And then you can even get really fancy with like our cave guy. Isn't he so cute? I love this. It's so great. So these, every stitch here in the pink and the green, these are actually, it reminds me of my first um, like cross stitching that yeah. I used to do. Yeah. So these are all little cross stitches and this is done in four pieces and you can do a very large piece like that. Yeah, the too. first time I actually saw that, um, I thought it was cross stitched or yeah. some kind of yeah. hand stitching just because it's so dense and, yeah. and it's, it, um, you know how Kate used to do needle yeah. point? Needle it reminds point, yeah. me of the needle point that I used to yeah. love to do. Yeah. But this is easier because I don't have to do the sewing. <laughs> she does the sewing. I love it. Do you have any embroidery right. questions? Uh, we do have some questions. So um, Joan, Joan is asking about um, saying that she has issues with her Apple computer. So Joan, if you want to just send an email to Adrian, we can help you out with whatever uh, issues you're having. No problem. Um, does this information also apply to Burnett machines as well? Yeah. Yes. So the, the big books do cover Burnett machines. Um, in this big book of embroidery, it does cover Burnett hoops and, and a lot of Burnett information yeah. as well. Yep. The icons on the Burnett embroidery machine is the same as on Bernina. So you're learning exactly the same thing. I will say that the Bernina big book of feet is pretty specific to the hundred or so Bernina feet that we have. And uh, if you're a Burnett user, you, you probably don't need the big book of feet. Dare I say that? It's kind of fun to have. It anyway. is fun to have, but it's not exactly um, mm -hmm. Burnett specific. Yeah. But I think with the embroidery, big book of embroidery, I think even if you don't have a Bernina and a different brand, yes. I think it's still, there's still a lot of relevant information. Most of the chapters are usable for anybody. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, you trying to stump me? There's there's just so many <laughs> questions, so I'm trying to keep them coming. Deb Deb sweating over here. Keep Laura is uh, <laughs> having a problem with her hoop staying taut. Does Bernina have a magnetic magnetic hoop? Oh, okay. So Burnett has a magnetic hoop, but Bernina, we just came out with a new hoop called a clamp hoop, the medium clamp hoop, and it actually I can show you how it works right now if you want because we brought it out for later. It comes with clamps. This is my bowl. I made it with my number 59. Anyway, <laughs> and it comes with a, a square hoop, which is amazing. Why do we love a square hoop? Because when we quilt, we get to use the whole block in there. Mm -hmm. Look, it even fits Deb's head. Mirror, mirror, my head too. Um, and then what you do is you can clamp your stabilizer with these, these clamps. And this hoop is super light. Um, so it's not so heavy on your embroidery machine. You could actually damage your embroidery machine with those heavy, heavy magnetic hoops. Um, I've used this one. I use this one to make the cat project. Mm -hmm. And I use this a little bit to do some uh, quilting with my embroidery machine. I might be giving away some secrets for later in the webinar. Um, but that's the medium clamp hoop. It will fit on a Bernina 7 series or an 8 series. And I'm just saying it's called a medium clamp hoop. So take what you will from that name. Can you do embroidery on a 530? Uh, no, you can't do embroidery on a 530. Can you please show some pages in the embroidery oh, yeah. book? Okay. Oh. Hooping. Um, okay. Let me just do a couple for you here. Is there Apple compatibility? I don't have Microsoft. Are you talking about the software, Joan? I'm not sure what you're referring yeah, to. Yeah, Joan, send us an email on that one. So here's the big book of embroidery, basic editing functions on machines um where is like a technique okay so different techniques so this is called a tile scene this is where you put together each individual block is like a little mini quiltlet about five by five or seven by seven depends on the design 
and then you sew them together. This is sort of a modern one, and then this is kind of a, a more traditional one. So that's uh, different types of techniques. There's different types of uh, stitching. There's um, applique that Deb was talking about in embroidery. You can do applique. It makes the process go really quick. And I can show you one more thing. So Debbie was asking if there's a pattern in this book. So these books are mainly mm. technique based and information based. Yeah. There aren't a lot of there. There isn't any um, projects, projects or yeah. patterns in yeah. there. So what's really interesting is a lot of the pictures are taken from the Bernina blog or the Bernina USA blog known mm -hmm. as wealsew.com. And those projects are all there for free. And um, I really suggest you get on there, or if you're in Canada and you want to link to free projects, sign up for our Facebook and Instagram accounts because Deb, she posts a lot of free projects on there. So, but that is one thing is, this is not a manual. No. This is not your Bernina mastery workbook where you work through each function and understand how each function on the machine. Yeah. This is a big overarching compilation of everything you can do in the world of embroidery or everything you can do in the world of long arming or whatever we're talking yeah. about next. Yeah. Just, yeah. just a lot of really great information yeah. Yeah. and techniques. I'm glad that she brought that up because we talked about how this is like a, a technical reference yeah. and not a project not a book. Project yeah. book. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so Joan, you're asking about uh, Adrian's email address. You can just reply to the webinar email. registration and mm -hmm. then she'll get it. And I think we have her email too because she registered. She might there might be more than one Joan, but I'll try to track you down, Joan. Okay. Um, so Shannon is asking about this quilt. So we're we're gonna talk about yep. this quilt in a minute. Mm -hmm. And you're getting ready for the next book, aren't you? What is the mass master book? I guess the mastery book. Oh, mastery work for the 790, uh, sorry, 590 E. Oh, you can shoot me an email for that. I can send you a link or you can go to Bernina.com in any country, Canada, US, that's, you know, where we mo mostly work. Um, and click on the tab at the top right called Learn and Create. And then you'll see the mastery workbooks there for the current models. If you need an older model, you can shoot me an email or um, you can, Mr. Google will find a lot of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Give him a try, give a Google search. Anything else for embroidery, we're good? We're moving on. We're moving on to um, a book that got me really excited. Now, I thought that Deb was gonna get a rash when she read this book, because she's not exactly familiar with surging, but what, what I, I happened? I thought I would get a rash too, yeah, because what? I really don't know anything about <laughs> surging, to be honest. Very, very little. Basics, basics. Very, yeah, mm -hmm. just basic. I do have a serger, but it sits on, you know, the top shelf where it's really accessible. So, you know, <laughs> the top shelf. Yeah. <laughs> you're not, ex you're not super tall, Deb. <laughs> so I generally uh, take out. I, I generally wait till I have like two or three projects yeah. that need surging, yeah. and then I take it out once. And um, I have one stitch. My machine doesn't have one stitch. I have. But one you stitch. have one. Okay. Very yeah. Good. So the four stitch, uh, four overlock. thread overlock mm -hmm. is the only one that I knew and the only one that I used. I have a sample of it, of a perfectly balanced stitch, <laughs> hanging from the side of my machine. And so, so you every know time it can I, be done. Every time I use yep. it, mm -hmm. I look at, I compare my stitch to the balanced one that I yep. know. Yep. And that's how I use my serger. So I would say you are a four thread overlock stitch expert. Specialist, specialist. Maybe specialist. specialist. I wouldn't say expert. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I that's the only thing I used it for. Yeah. Um, you know, and when I changed threads, yeah. I tied a knot and I just totally you know, legit. changed colors. I think it's in the book. It is in the book. <laughs> but that's 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 how I did everything with yeah. my surgery. Yeah. But but then what happened? But I read this book and there's diagrams and charts for everything. We love a everything. Chart. We love a I, chart. I just, yeah. Okay, let's, I'll show you the synopsis of this book. Are you ready? So the big book of surging, I think it was the third book that came out, was super exciting. It shows all kinds of stitch variations, functions. More importantly, when should you use which stitch, right? If you're using, mm -hmm. if you're making a bathing <laughs> suit, how do I decide what stitch to use, right? That's kind of in this book. It is. That's it not is. in your manual, no, really, no. right? So that's pretty good. And the whole goal with this 
is that you can achieve professional results with your surgery. That's yeah. that's the goal of this book. Yeah, yeah. So so there's a chart on what what. <laughs> What, you want me to show what, them? Uh, what fabric to okay. use, mm -hmm. with what stitch, mm -hmm. and the great thing about these stitches, these diagrams and the stitches, See? is they're all color coded. They tell you which so thread is which. Yep. Adrian, who's a pro at this, she just looks at the stitch and she'll say to me, Deb, you know, this is... Take your this, up or yeah. looper, I'll be fine. And I turn around, I look at her and she says, well, let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, or you just ask me like, how do you know that? Yeah. Right? So the yeah. diagrams here make it so easy to to see which thread. Identify which thread. Is, yeah, it's not yeah. balanced properly. Yeah. And then you can, you know, adjust that thread as you need it. Yeah. Um, the other thing I really love, and I know you you can spot these, you can spot this without even. Sometimes. Without even thinking. But when there's a problem with the stitch. Yep. I don't know what's wrong. Right. All I know is, you know, I, I send you a picture and then you say, Deb, <laughs> Deb this is it's what true. you have to do. It's true. Page 66 yeah. shows you yeah. all the problems you would have and then it explains to you how you can fix it. Yeah. Now, if you have a, a Bernina with a touchscreen on it, like the L860 or the L890, this is on screen. Mm -hmm. But most of us, mm -hmm. we have a traditional serger that you thread manually. Yep. And to make the adjustments, we're going to have to make the adjustments manually. Right. So it's all there. Troubleshooting yep. is there. And that's how mm -hmm. I know now that I need to have a 860 or an 890. I'm really concerned about my job security. If Deb can find all these answers in the book, what will I do with all my spare time? Feel free to send me some suggestions. <laughs> I think I know it. I think you, I know. You know, I text you every day for a reason. <laughs> so, you know, what was interesting is uh, if you can pass me the samples, I'll talk while you find the questions. Um, what's really interesting is uh, Deb was talking about how sergers often have um, 18 stitches or 28 stitches or something like that, right? And really, those are all variations of the same three or four stitches, right? So um, I've got Demus here, and he is wearing a cute little ruffle with rolled hem on the edge. So rolled hem is really popular for making wired edge ribbons, making veils, making uh, napkins and other lightweight things. So if you know how to do rolled hem, you also know how to do lettuce edge and a whole bunch of other things. It's all in the book, it's okay. It's all in the book. Um, then you can learn how to do fancy stitches, like how do you do this blanket stitch on the edge of a blanket? It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It looks hand done. <laughs> I don't do anything by hand. They don't pay me to do hand stitches. We even combined some embroidery on this guy too. So that's pretty cool. Um, we did teach a class here about, this is a sampler scarf and it has every one of the stitches. And that's basically how you started to learn your stitches. It is. It Flat is. lock, rolled hem. And that's when I realized yeah. that it was just variations of like three or four stitches no. and not, not more. You should have seen her <laughs> face. She was like, it's not really 16 stitches because it's, it's overlock narrow, it's overlock wide, yeah. <laughs> it's the same stitch, different needle position. <laughs> um, the other thing that it talks about is when do you need a cover hem machine? You know, a cover hem machine is actually a little bit different than a serger. It only has one looper, it can have up to three needles, and it really is for that fine finishing of uh, things. So here's a cover hem stitch. This one was with three needles, and then you can kind of see the finishing on the inside. It gives a nice stretch, so it allows me to be able to pull this over my head. And it's often, it's used mostly on the hems of sleeves and uh, finished hems, you know, t-shirts and dresses and, and things like that. Um, so that's kind of interesting. And then you're thinking, but Adrian, I don't make clothes, so I don't need a serger. Deb and I are like, a t-shirt? I could buy a t-shirt, I'm not gonna make a t-shirt. But I've done lots of quilting with my serger. That's what I love to do. So there's actually some cute little quilting. I'll show you here in close up. You see that I've got the quilting actually on the outside, the serging on the outside as a decorative element here. So that's pretty cool. Next time I do this, I'm going to do it with a contrasting thread to make it show even there's, more. There's a section in this serging book that how do you make a quilt? So from beginning I to end. I didn't get that far. <laughs> piecing. Um, Binding the actual quilting, you can do that all on a serger. Wow, yeah, that, I did that kind of blew my mind. I can't I, wait to try that binding technique, yeah, because it makes a really nice, taut, mm, firm binding. Yeah, I love that. 
Hope police won't maybe, catch us with a nice binding. Maybe like I don't need a sewing machine. Maybe I'll just go with the serger. Can't wait to get that 890. I want it so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Robin, for sharing uh, the mastery workbook link. Um, I'm a surging ninja. Uh, not quite there, but I'm I'm going to be. I'm going to be. <laughs> She's getting really good. Um, is this book only a reference book for Bernina surgeries? So no, there's so much information in yeah. there. I mean, it does refer to Bernina machines yeah. uh, at the beginning and which which uh, machines are available. Yeah. But then as you go through the book, there's a lot of information on surging in general. Yeah. And if you do have a Bernina or a Burnett sewing machine, it also talks about accessories. I never, mm -hmm. I always forget that Bernina sergers and sergers in general, there are accessories to make things even better with sergers. There are rufflers, there are gathers, there are binders. You can put the binding on a t-shirt or a quilt in one step, just like with your sewing machine. That kind of blew my mind. Right? right? Yeah, all the feet, all the accessories. I Yeah. There's a lot in that surging world. It's like that world of embroidery I said to you to be very careful getting into because there's a lot. <laughs> But it's all in the book, which is great, right? It is, it is. So you can read ahead for mm -hmm. the things that you might want to do later. Yep. Or you can troubleshoot the things that you're working on right now. Yep. And and it gives you a lot of options too. It shows you a lot of different techniques so that you can actually oh, uh, so that you can that. actually, you know, try the techniques if, if it's something that you're oh, so interested in doing. That's cool. Here's like a piping. Here's like a piping technique. Sure, piping. So, and very specific on how you do it. Mm -hmm. So even though it's not a project, now you have this technique under your belt yeah. or in your toolbox so that when you're ready to do it, yeah. you're ready to go. And that's why when I was going through these books, quite often I would, I, I really wanted to go to my sewing machine or my serger or whatever to try the techniques because it was just easy. It wasn't like a whole, I didn't have to dedicate my time to a whole project. Most of it is just, just try this out and then, um, and then I was good to go. I learned that technique and I learned how to do it on my machine. It's kind so. of broken down into yeah. smaller, smaller subjects. Yeah. Okay. So this is um, one of the ones I love reading. Yeah. 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 Very inspiring. So Laura, it's time to take your machine, your surger out of the box, pick up a book and yeah. And then try it out. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. You know, surging is not my um, natural um, area, right? Mm -hmm. I, I identify, I identify as a quilter. <laughs> but um, I do love trying new things with a serger, and I actually made this beautiful um, cardigan. It's a Jali pattern uh, out of Montreal, and it was a very simple project. I It took longer to cut it out than it did to do the four seams to sew it together. It's called the you, cocoon cardigan. You really need to stand up and show everybody, I because okay. I was blown away. I didn't realize she made this. It okay. looks amazing. You know, I've been sitting all day and wrinkled in it now, but... And I, I've had this for about four years. It's been washed and worn a bajillion times and I love it. And I made one for my sister mm -hmm. who loves hers as well. So, um, do yeah, you, if you, you have knit fabric. for your bestie. Yeah, Bernina stores, uh, Bernina stores, beware. If you have knit fabric in your stores, I'm coming for you. So is Deb. You're going to make your own. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on Next so up. that we can get to all the books. Oh my gosh. Okay, so are you ready? We're going into our favorite territory. Da, 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 da. The big book of machine quilting. It talks all about quilting essentials, special press recipe for quilting, machine functions of Bernina, Bernina machines in specifically. Now, what's so interesting is that, did you think that a book of just machine quilting could be so hefty? <laughs> Quite big. One thing that really blew me away, I thought I knew a lot about machine quilting. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. Um, it's You're not, a good quilter. You've quilted many things. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's not my it's not my go to thing, but uh, quilted. I mean, I've made quilts, so I thought yeah. I knew. Did yeah. you know that there's four pages of styles of quilts in here? Mm. I didn't know there were that many styles. I don't think there's. That's a lot of styles. That's a lot of styles. Yeah, that's good. And and I could actually, when I was reading through it, I thought of a few more that weren't mentioned. So oh, volume I, two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah four pages of different styles of quilts yeah. who knew it's a great book it's it's a, a great book. if you love quilting it's a really good again it's not about a project it's about giving you the tools and the techniques so that when you sit down to do a project when you see that project on the facebook feed from your favorite mm -hmm. store go yep. by and it says paper piecing you go oh do i know how to can my machine do paper piecing you can 
go yep. to that reference page. You can look it up. Oh, paper PC needs a short stitch length. I can make my stitch length shorter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you have the confidence to say, I think I might sign up for that class yeah. and, and take yeah. that. So yeah. it's a really great building block yep. book. Also like parts, it tells you about the different parts of the quilt for people who are beginners mm -hmm. so that you know, you know what people are talking about when they talk about sashing or cornerstones. So, so much jargon. There's so, so much, much jargon. There's so much. Yeah. So much. Um, yeah. Also talks about choosing fabrics, color theory, values, all that sort of stuff. So oh, using Bernina software mm -hmm. to create your own quilt designs. Yep. Did you know that in Bernina software version 789, 789 you've got uh, a quilting program in there that you can design quilt your, assistant. yeah, it's yep. called quilt, Quilter and you can design your own quilt and it even tell you how much fabric you need to buy. Yeah. You can't tell me how much fabric to buy though. I always just buy all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I always buy too much. She's like, stop way. it with your stupid dad humor. Move on. <laughs> uh, I mean, we buy too much so we can share. What's too much? Who's it hurting? It's great. I, you know, every time I need to do a quilt, I'm like, Deb, I've got peach fabric. Here you go. Oh, you need a couple more reds in case. Here you go. Who's it hurting? Not you. Not me. Not me. <laughs> But it's a really good one, um, great for, um, mostly for domestic machines, but there's also information on long arming in here a mm -hmm. little bit, a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. But this would be mostly for people who want to quilt on their um, whole household machine, your yeah. domestic machine. Well, who, who want to make quilts and yeah. just need to yeah. know more about the techniques involved. Yeah. Accurate, um, so from everything, from the beginning everything. to the end. Yeah. Accurate piecing, yeah. even choosing fabric, prepping fabric. Yeah. And, the, and obviously the different techniques as well, like mm -hmm. applique or, mm -hmm. you know, what, whatever. So else. it's a good to go to mm -hmm. encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. of it also has a section on notions, scissors, pressing, all that sort of stuff. You did commit this all to memory. That's amazing. <laughs> Isn't Deb amazing? Everybody send in kudos for Deb later. I did. I did read through them. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty great. Any quilting questions? I mean, it talks about some of the great Bernina quilting tools as well, like our, our walking foot. Mm -hmm. Other brands have walking mm -hmm. feet, mm -hmm. so you'll be able to translate that information. Yeah. Free motion quilting, of course, the Bernina stitch regulator is a specialty mm -hmm. product that um, that we have that you would enjoy uh, for quilting. And also features on a sewing machine. If you're if you're looking mm -hmm. to buy a machine to quilt, mm -hmm. uh, it actually talks about features on a machine for you to look for mm -hmm. that will assist you in quilting. So maybe something like the needle down. You always want the needle to be down. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. That's, Big, uh, bigger throat space if you want to do, you know, giant quilts. That, that sounds like us. <laughs> we do like a big quilt. <laughs> we have some big beds to cover up. It's all good. All right. Any more machine quilting or we're going to uh -huh. move on to our next one? Are any of these books available as ebooks? No, not yet. These are all available at your local Bernina uh, dealership. So give them a call and secure your copy today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So the next book we want to talk about is the big book of long arm quilting. Boy, Deb and I have come through this one a lot because first of all, we love long arm quilting in the office, but somebody I know is thinking that she might need her own long arm. So um, it's great because you can learn about the everything you need for long arm quilting, everything from beginning to end, loading a quilt, uh, mm -hmm. squaring it up, all those things even how I think to put binding on, on a frame. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's cool. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. I've learned yeah. about it. I'm ready. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is how it's and of course this covers both um, frame models. So machine that runs along a frame and you kind of guide it with your hands or automate it mm -hmm. or sit down or table models, we would yeah. call them. So it, it covers just about anything that has that big throat mm -hmm. space. And yeah. it also covers Qmatic. Okay, automation. So, and how to and how to use it and how to set things up in Qmatic, how to um, create a design, create a design, mm -hmm. how to set up your whole quilt, mm. um, all like the to lay out the to whole lay out everything wow. on yep. Qmatic. Mm -hmm. yep. So it shows you how to do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This, so so this is the book that I when I have to eat by myself sometimes. Yeah. Uh, this is the book that I have on the table with me. And I flip through it and, you know, a little get bit, a lot of did you know, a little, <laughs> little bit of drooling on the book. But yep. this is the book, my go to book when yep. I uh, want to read something because I am looking to get a long arm. It's your hopefully. dream book, right? Like, yep. and it's so great because you have the book. Mm -hmm. And like you're saying, it's really helping to inform 
your decision, right? Like, yeah, for sure. Like the size of the throat of the machine is a big consideration. The type of frame mm -hmm. that you want, mm -hmm. if you want automation or not, or what other yeah. guidance systems or not. So it, it does help to inform your decision as well as a, a reference for when you do have a machine. Yeah. So um, does it tell you about like creating a new design, a new quilt design? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Bernina, is that in Qmatic? In Qmatic. And, and in Art and Stitch. Oh, in Art and Stitch. Art okay. And so Stitch. when yeah. you buy automation with Bernina, not only do you get automation to control where the machine sews, like on Deb's here, but you also get another piece of software, Art and Stitch, which is a very powerful embroidery quilting software that you can modify designs. Mm -hmm. Like maybe in this one, maybe you wanted um, your clouds to be double, um, like, Twice as spirally, mm -hmm. you could do that, or you can create your own new designs. Do you want to talk about this quilt quickly? Yeah, yeah. Or do you? You made this quilt. I, I did. I, I, we made Deb make this quilt. Here's your assignment, so, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> so this pattern is by one of the Bernina ambassadors, Brett Lewis, um, natural born qu quilter, and it's called Barn Dance. Um, it was so much fun to make. It looks like everything is on the bias, but it's actually not. Uh, I just cut squares and put them together on an angle. Cool. And it has, it ends up looking really impressive. Yeah. So the funny thing about this quilt is that I had, should I tell everybody this? <laughs> I tried to keep it secret, but you can let it in. <laughs> so I had. The two, whole quilt done. Yeah, the whole quilt done. I brought it in and I was so proud. We're ready to quilt it. And I was showing Adrian and she was, Deb, did you mean to do this? And it turned out that two of the blocks I had flipped on their side, yeah. on its side. And um, yeah, so then I took it home, fixed it. You fixed it yeah. before we quilted it. <laughs> it was good. And we quilted it here at the office with our Bernina Q20 on a classic frame mm -hmm. with Qmatic. And how long did it take you? I let you do it all by yourself pretty yeah, much. It took me about half a day. Yeah. 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 With answering emails yeah. and the phone. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty great. And this design is actually from the case um, that's included in the cake machine. Oh, the, the, the quilting, quilting design that we chose is um, is a special design that count, came <clears> with <throat> the 770 cape edition. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty cool. And we used cape uh, material yep. to get it more cape in there. Um, we'll make it with Brett's material next time. But thank you for the lovely pattern. It's It's really great. Um, when will you design a BSR compatible for machine rulers? Oh, okay. So this person is asking about using the BSR with rulers to get regulated ruler work. So one thing to note, I'm just going to talk about long arms real quick, is um, Bernina long arms, every stitch is regulated. So if you do automated quilting, if you do free motion, the, quilt, the stitches are always automated, even with ruler work. So if you do ruler work on a Bernina Q20 or Q24 on a frame or a Q16 on a frame or one on a sit down table, it's always regulated. Now, with the regular Bernina foot on a regular domestic sewing machine, we don't have a Bernina ruler work foot attachment at this point. I, we have asked our designers to, to look at that, um, but we do have a lot of great tips on how to have very successful ruler work without using the Bernina stitch regulator. So get in touch with your Bernina dealers and uh, take a ruler work class, you'll, you'll love it. It works great. But I, I know exactly what you're asking about. So I have a couple of people asking about this quilt mm -hmm. and um, it's by Brett Lewis. He is natural born quilter. If you're looking him up on Instagram or Facebook, natural born quilter yep. and uh, Brett Lewis, and you can buy the pattern through his website. Instant download, Instant easy download. peasy, you can make it today. <laughs> um, it was a fun one and it's big blocks, so it doesn't waste a lot of fabric, it's pretty good. So um, Jennifer says, I do not have a Bernina long arm, would the big book be worth buying? I'm still a novice with the long arm. So this is one of the books that is a little bit Bernina a little bit more Bernina specific, mm -hmm. but I would say that there is information there in there that is for anybody who's looking for a long arm. Yeah. Um, little, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've looked at it many times because mm -hmm. I'm trying to decide on a long arm and decide what size I want and what 
what mm -hmm. features I want on it. Yep. So um, this has helped me kind of come to a conclusion. Yep. But I mean, I like loading a quilt is on the, in there, basting a quilt. Um, uh, I was just thinking of something else that I wanted to say about, you know, different techniques, pantograph, how to, how to mm -hmm. use a pantograph, um, basics of how to run a, a long arm business. Things like that are in there so you'll find at least 50 percent of it is going to apply to you yeah right that was really the most surprising part about about the book when i was reading through mm -hmm. it the the section on how to create a long-arm business yeah so it actually talks about you know what you should be charging or and you know what you should be offering and the different things that you can offer yeah. when you are uh, starting a business yeah it's not the be all and end all because it's just one section in the book but it certainly does give thought to mm -hmm. what you should do next mm -hmm. so that's kind of that's kind of great yeah yep yeah. yeah. I know that um that that book is high on high on Deb's list for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's true all right we've almost made it to the end of our list keep those questions coming um hopefully we haven't taken up too too much of your time but there's two books that just came out at the end of last year that we want to talk about and the first one is called the big book of stitches and it was it overviews all types of stitches, including, yes, decorative stitches, which are gorgeous, but also the practical stitches. How do we use those? You know, the first 10 that are on the front of your machine? <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> and it talks about when to use them and how to use them and, and that kind of thing. It is a gorgeous book, very inspiring, I think, because, you know, I don't remember, but I think on your 790, you have over 1300 stitches yeah. on it. Yeah. And we haven't used all of them yet. No, 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 not yet. I, I was saying to Adrian when I read this, I'm so glad that it wasn't my assignment to have to write the content <laughs> for this book because I'm like a six stitch kind of person. Yeah, yeah I'm a 20 stitch gal. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really use more than like the basics. Um, even the practical stitches, like there's about 10 10-ish yep. in the practical yep. stitches. Yeah. I only know what two of them are right? for. Right. I know the blind hem. I know the overlocker. I know the Dude, that's way more than I know the right? running <laughs> stitch, the, the zig 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 zag 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 zag. Did you know that don't there know is what the a stitch is for. stretch stitch and a super stretch stitch? No, no. There is a stretch stitch, the one that looks like the lightning. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a super stretch one. I didn't know that. Okay. I do have a little so bit, anyways, little bit more reading. There's today. a chart in here. <laughs> that tells you what all those stitches, all those utility practical stitches are for? Yep. I had no idea. I really- It I, is amazing. Yeah, I yeah. just, you know. Yeah. And so now, anyways, now I refer to the book when I'm looking for something specific yep. and um, try to find a stitch that matches what I want to do with it. Yep. And it makes it much easier. The settings, like you're saying, the, the settings, settings are important because you want to get to the good results as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to have a good time. Can you pass me the samples and I will show you what some of the things that are inspiring out of this book. So um, in this book, we talk um, about different techniques. So um, we've talked about free motion couching and this is the kind of thing that is with free motion couching. This is a yarn that is stitched down at the same time that I'm quilting. So this is just a little quilted piece. And I just do, I was gonna say Googled it, doodled on it <laughs> with thread and you can get a really great result and it's quilted through at the same time. So that's a sort of free motion couching. But um, I also tried some new stitching, which is um, twin needle stitching. Let me just see if I can show you that. Do you see how there's two colors of thread, both pink and um, magenta at the same time? You can see it here as well. That's because I stitched this with a twin needle. And in the book, it talks about twin needle stitching, decorative stitching, stuff like that. And um, hopefully you'll be inspired with this book to try something with lots of stitches. So I tried this great project by Bernina Ambassador from Australia, Deborah Louie, different Deb. Different all Debs are lots, good. Lots of Debs. Lots of Debs, all Debs are good. Isn't it cool? Look at all those great decorative stitches. And it shows you how to do one stitch at a time, how to modify stitches. All that kind of great stuff is also in this book. So hopefully you'll feel inspired to try those great stitches that the salesperson showed you at the store and you haven't gotten around to using. That's me, are you talking to me? Oh, I didn't mean you <laughs> specifically. Sorry, Deb. She's so sensitive. It's hard to work with somebody like this sometimes. <laughs> 
one great thing I really did love about this book um, was the stitch recipe. So I, I combine my stitches. I use my combi mode and I combine my a few stitches to make one stitch. A new pattern. A new pattern. Oh, great. But, yep. but what this book Ooh, let showed me, show me them. is stitch recipes. Oh, so let me show you. Oh, sorry, wrong camera. There you go. Did so what how... they've done is they've taken rows of stitches and put them next to other rows to make like a band of of decorative stitching. Oh, that is like a hand stitching fake out. I love anything that looks like it took so, impressive. so much time. Yeah, so impressive. And then like the different thread colors to make it even more impressive. So cool. So so stitch re <clears throat> recipes is probably your next project. You're going to try something. Yeah, and this is, this is for sure the one thing when I read it, I was ready to just drop everything <laughs> and go to my machine and try some of these recipes out. Yeah, um, yeah, they, it just, I mean, there's a whole section on it and it's, it's just so cool seeing all the stitches and how they're made. I can't cook right now. I gotta finish my stitch recipes. Remember that and day I said like... I was busy and I couldn't work? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no reason, no reason. Any other questions on the stitching book? That is such a cool book. It just came out last year fall so it's one of the newest ones um so monica says for clothing adult sewing projects are there instagram or facebook or website you would recommend to help oh. learn sewing and bernina yeah the we also has mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of garmentry um projects on there and that's so funny that you bring that up because dev and i were dreaming just before this webinar what's the next like they've done so many books what's the next book and my idea was the big book of garmentry or fashion so i will i'll send that to bernina of america right away also um, i have one customer already yeah. also our <laughs> bernina blog once a month has a free oh. uh, piece of clothing that's uh, a pattern that is for you to get if you sign up for the yes sign email. up for the bernina inspirations newsletter or the bernina mm -hmm. blog and you will get a free they're awesome the patterns uh, it could be a bag pattern could be a blouse could be pants what is it this month i've forgotten already i think it was the joggers yeah like yoga pants yeah they were yeah. really nice mm -hmm. um so yeah sign up for that the instructions are very bernina specific so yeah, really fun to learn that way. Um, and there's also a Bernina magazine called Bernina Inspirations Magazine mm -hmm. that you can sign up and get a beautiful copy sent to you, or you, there's a digital format as well. I'm yep. gonna get that a lot faster from Germany than, than the printed copy that I just got last week, so. Do you know the price of these books? Um, these books, mm -hmm. uh, the MSRP is about $99 for these books. Uh, stores can sell them for less, so double check at your local store. Do you recommend making a sample book of stitches for your own machine? I would say yes. Yeah, that's a great There's project. actually a section in this book that tells you, gives you um, tips on yep. how to make one. Yep. And, and Mary Beck just did a, something on that a, about a year ago and we also, mm -hmm. if you go and we also and stitch and um, in their search engine, if you type in stitch uh, reference, mm -hmm. you'll probably get that project. She gives a really great, great way to do it. Monica, thank you for your kind words. She says very helpful. Monica is the best. Uh, webcast. I love that project. Learned so much. Yeah. I missed the webinar. Can I still get in another? Yep, time? recording is coming. Don't worry. And we have one more book to talk about. And other than that, people are um, doing well. Can you just talk about the clamshell project oh. and how they can get a pattern or sure. how they can? So this is a, a pattern by Bernie Ambassador Deb Louie. She's from Australia. So it's very hard to get her patterns into Canada. We are bringing more in, and it is written specifically for Bernina. So um, what's really great about it, it's all applique. Um, so remember, Deb, I used to hate applique. I now love applique. I understand how to do it. She has really great instructions on applique. You actually work on each clam individually, and then you put it all together at the end. So it's not as daunting as you think. You just work on this, the little clams individually and put it together and use decorative stitches. So many great things in that she teaches you about. She teaches you about pattern begin and pattern end on your machine, combination mode, extending a, um, a stitch, um, making alterations to it to make it look good, how to pivot to get the smooth clammy clams. You don't want jaggedy clams or muscles, whatever they are. We want nice smooth. How many stitches did you use for this? Okay, you would think that I used hundreds. I thought you used hundreds. I think I used 15. And plus a couple of extra than here. But because I changed the colors and the sizes of it, and I saved it to my memory, so I just have to flip back and forth and back and forth. I didn't even have to remember the settings. Oh, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. I can't wait to make another one. I think maybe I'll make a pillow to go with it. Yeah. 
Yeah. So if if you guys ever see this close up, you'll see yeah. that there's just it just looks Do you so want to see it close up? so impressive because there's so many stitches. And I literally thought she used every stitch on the machine. And when you I asked her, you did fall off your chair when I told you it was only a few yeah. stitches. Yeah, I'll show you a little incredible. Closer. There you go. Isn't it cool? So you can see how she's you know stretched some stitches out, made them wider, made them skinnier, and they it's you know it just looks like a different stitch. Deb, altogether. buy some variegated thread. That always impresses everybody. My husband thought I changed the thread color. <laughs> did you tell him you I did? I did, honey. I did. I'm very good. <laughs> so yeah learn more about your stitches and if you're interested in that project just shoot me an email and i'll get you in touch with a store that has those books we're bringing in more books it's going to take us about a month to get them in so just just be patient it's a really great class we've taught it online before so, so robin has suggested big book of accessories big book of bags big book of fashion <gasps> you're the best robin robin we have to go for coffee i'll see you when we go out and west Seth, of here is there a book on quilting with your embroidery machine. <gasps> she, it's it's like we paid her to. And I owe you a fat quarter because that is our last book we want to talk about. It is indeed the big book of computerized quilting. You may know this as uh, quilting in the hoop, but we call it computerized quilting because it actually incorporates a little bit more than that. So um, in computerized quilting is quilting using your domestic sewing machine or your long arm machine in an automated fashion. It also talks about creating and editing quilt designs and learning different techniques. Let's take a look at what Deb means by that. I'm getting tired. You have to talk now, Deb. I'm joking. <laughs> Here's our book. It's the last book that just joined us. It's a gorgeous book, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. So you can use your embroidery machine mm -hmm. to make like long arm looking quilts. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the book that I read last. Um, Save the best. For me. So you could say that I saved the best for last, but this is the one that I was most, this is the technique that I'm most afraid of trying oh. and doing because it just, it looks really impressive, it, doesn't it, it? It looks like it's really hard to do. But then I read the book and I watched you do it and I was like, no. I hate when I show so. Deb all my secrets, then she thinks everything <laughs> is easy and then where am I going to be? <laughs> It's true. <laughs> so here's an example of, I quilted this on a Bernina 700. This is the Tula Pink quilt. You can get this design from Scissor Tail, Scissor Tail. or OESD Embroidery Online. And you just make a quilt, you make the entire quilt. You can do a little bit of walking foot quilting if you want to secure the squares down, if you like. You don't have to. And then you take your embroidery hoop and you hoop each square and you drop a design in and you quilt through the entire quilt. Let me show you how I quilted right through the quilt. Do you see that? Gorgeous, looks impressive, customized quilting with my Bernina 700. So check out the border looks great. This is done with a, an embroidery machine. So you need an embroidery machine. I used a maxi hoop, but you could do this with a oval hoop, oval hoop. midi hoop. The new square hoop, the clamp hoop, that would be delightful. And is this the one you use triple stitch on? So yeah, um, normally quilting, we just go over the stitch one mm -hmm. time, but I actually chose the designs in triple stitch. So they look a little bit heavier. I can show you a close up if you like. What I mean by triple stitch is, so you can see the design, how it's quite a bit more detailed because the machine actually goes over it one, two, three times and then moves to the next stitch and so on. And it gives sort of a more embroidered look. And I actually chose this on a dare, Deb, because I thought that the triple stitch would not look good. Boy, was I wrong. It, it looks freaking amazing. I love it. It's I love so it. good. It's one of the favorite things I ever made. And no, um, you cannot snuggle under this quilt. This is a my wall quilt for sure. For and sure. <laughs> I almost love the back of this quilt more than I like the front of it. I mean, I love the front, don't get me wrong, but the back is just so impressive. Right? It just looks so amazing and everything is, is, is the same. Yeah, so if you have pinpoint placement on your Bernina machine, you can use pinpoint placement to accurately place the mm -hmm. blocks. If you don't, guess what? There's other techniques that are described in this book, like hoop move yep. and centering that you can use to get the exact same professional results, right? I can't wait to make another one of these. They're so fun. Like not this one, because I don't usually repeat myself, but another design. Yeah. Oh, I got a fun, maybe an Amanda <clears throat> Murphy one, like a sewing related one or something. 
So this is a little bit different. This is, can you see this? This is basically edge to edge quilting, right? So we've connected the, and again, I just did this on a Bernina 570 with a, yeah, so I, I thought you did this on the long arm when nope. you when you showed it to me nope. because it it just looks so right? amazing. So you just got to you pick the right type of design and there's information on that and then you just quilt it. It's more impressive on the plain side, isn't it? You can see it better on the plain side yeah. I think than on this side. Yeah. But yeah, you just use your embroidery machine to join these motifs together to get that look of long arm. Yeah. It and just looks like a really great edge to edge you know, on Panto. the long arm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's so fun. And um, I just, I had a blast with that one. So that's, you can do edge to edge. You can do edge to edge on a long arm. You can do edge to edge on your regular embroidery machine. If you have a quilting machine and you think you need an embroidery module, the answer is yes, you do need an embroidery module. Deb and I are hooked, okay? <laughs> and so here's like a small version of that, that tulip pink quilt where we learn how to place a design in the center. We learn how to do borders and connect them. You can still see my marks from class here. We learned how to mirror image the design and make a larger motif. Isn't that great? Because mm -hmm. you know that won't fit in my large oval hoop, but I could join two together to yeah. get a really nice, a nice big one. So those type of designs are, um, those type of techniques are described in the computerized yeah. quilting book. And one other thing that I really love about the book is it tells you all about selecting selecting designs and then it tells you about how to find a decent one, yeah. one that's, you know, and appropriate made well. too also yeah. for your quilting because you wouldn't have wanted mm -hmm. like a big um, yogi bear all the way through that, right? Because it would be kind of too mushy. Although I do love a yogi bear. Uh, maybe yogi bear. Maybe choose something else that I don't like. <laughs> choose something different. Sorry, Adrian. <laughs> the one cartoon character she loves. I hit on it. I hit on it. So yeah, that's a really good book. Yeah. It also talks about the new hoops that we have, optional hoops you can add to your machine. And uh, you were going to show us the latest hoop. The latest hoop that we have is how do you embroider something like this that's already closed at the bottom? That's really tricky. Bernina, we do have free arm on our machines, but we have a new free arm hoop that allows you to easily hoop closed items and still get them onto your sewing machine. So this could be closed and it would still attach to my machine and be able to um, move on my sewing machine. So if you're interested in that, if you like making bags mm -hmm. and you don't enjoy taking the bag apart to embroider it, yeah. ask me how I know, um, or t-shirts or things like that that are kind of more closed and difficult to hoop, that free arm embroidery hoop that works on five series, seven series, eight series machines, that might be the thing for you. Yeah. This hoop still blows my mind because even though it's so weird, even right? though I've used it, I just it's hard for me to think through how you actually how it actually works. It's such a strange hoop. Yeah. So this is the <clears> inner <throat> part of the hoop, and the bracket that attaches to the sewing machine is attached to the inner part of the hoop. This is the outer part of the hoop. That you traditionally that's, has the that's clamp. What, yeah, that's what sticks to the machine. I remember when we saw this at BU, I was instructing people how to do it, and I told them how to do it backwards. <laughs> Maybe I'm not invited back to Bernina University. I think I told I think I told them the wrong thing too because I couldn't conceptualize the whole. I think I trained you. And did it. <laughs> um, so this outer hoop actually goes inside the bag, which is wackadoodle. It's not how we ever do it. It's not how we ever do it. So I'm putting it inside the closed bag, fit it inside, and then you just clamp on top like so, right? And now. I can clamp this onto the machine and embroider. The arm of the machine is going to go inside the bag. There's enough room for it to move up and down to make the beautiful cape design. And Bob's your uncle. It's amazing. Not my amazing. My husband has an uncle Bob, so that works. But you get the idea. Yeah. It's, it's a very unusual hoop. It's um, Bernina's the only one that has it on the market. Mm -hmm. And um, it really does make hooping a joy. Yeah. It's the same size as the oval hoop. So if you had a seven or eight series machine and you don't have a, you know, a midi hoop and you're doing a lot of hooping, could you use this for regular embroidery? I would 100% use it. Yeah, because it's got that cool ratchet system on it. Makes yeah. it a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs an oval hoop anymore? I just need this hoop. I'm not going to throw out my oval hoop. I have no. two of them because I get one ready while it's embroidering. Yeah. I'm that crazy person. I do. I do that too. Yeah. I have more than one. Medium and oval, I have two. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
you learned a lot about us. They learned a lot about the big books. Mm -hmm. They learned a lot mm -hmm. about us and our craziness. Yep. Um, they learned that working at Bernina is, is fun. Slash. Mo most of the time fun. Slash wild. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully they learned that um, sewing, there's so much more to learn. Mm -hmm. And hopefully everybody realizes that these books are great if you have a Bernina machine, mm -hmm. but also very informative um, if you're trying to decide if you want to get into them or yeah. Yeah. it's just so much information in them. Yeah. I think you did bring up a good point that if you are thinking of going into a new area of sewing, whether that be long arming, machine quilting, long arm quilting, what did I say? Serging, embroidery. I think I repeated myself <laughs> a couple of times and getting a little punchy. But if you're thinking of going into a new area of sewing, this is a good investment Real, to do, yeah, it is. right? Yeah. And it'll really help you with your, your research. So it's not really about a project, it's really about capability, techniques, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So. Any last words? Any last questions? Um, questions. What is the stitch number for triple stitch? Oh, on most machines, I thought it was uh, six. I can look that up yep. for you. Robin, you can email us yep. or I can email it to you. Yep. Um, does the free arm hoop work on my 590E? It sure does. Yeah, the new 5 Series 590, 500, 535, 570. Mm -hmm. You'll need firmware so that it will recognize the hoop. Call your local Bernina dealer to get the right firm. Uh, Debbie, thank you for the kind words. Awesome. Sounds like everybody had a great time. Yeah. You learned something. If you have questions, you can definitely reach out to Deb and I. Mm -hmm. You can reach out to your local store. You can follow us on Bernina Social. You can look for our videos on Bernina Canada YouTube channel. We have a series called Bernina Besties where we try to give you some great information. And hopefully you connect with some of our Bernina Canada ambassadors. And lastly, most importantly, if you don't know about it, we are giving away a 770QE CAFE edition sewing and embroidery machine and software and embroidery package and luggage. And there's a big book of embroidery in there. That's so yeah, so look. Can I win? No, you work for us. Um, so go to the Bernina sweepstakes page, which I believe is uh, Bernina Cave Contest .ca or like Google Bernina Canada Cave Contest. It'll get you there and enter because somebody is going to win that. The drawing is the contest ends January thirty first. The drawing is February third, I think uh 2023 if you're watching this yeah. and hopefully you can win now there's if, also a link in our instagram bio so if you go into our instagram bio you can place. click on the link yes yeah and lastly deb said she had arranged a giveaway tell us about it Deb. i put it on the floor <laughs> okay so we are going to be giving away two of these books two, two. okay two yep two of these books um to anybody who's watched. You have to live in Canada. Yeah, live and, in Canada. Yeah. And you've, you know, you've watched, watched this video, video this webinar, yeah. where you're going to put your name into a, uh, probably a random number gen generator, yep. and then select two people to um, send these to. Yep, so look for the winner. It will be announced on probably Monday. Uh, that's January 23rd on Facebook and Instagram. And we will choose two lucky winners. Not you, Paul Leger. Okay. <laughs> Any famous last words? Um, there's just a couple. Can I purchase these book books through Bernina? My dealer closed. I think if you look up Bernina.com, you can find your local dealer and some of the books may be on our website. You can mm -hmm. double check. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of our dealers will sell these books online as well. Ship so you and ship to you. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And um, someone in New Zealand. Kiwi in New Zealand wants to win, even oh, if she has to pay for postage. Perfect. If I pull your name, uh, we'll split the postage. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we um, love New Zealand. We love Australia. So, Julia, because you watched the webinar, we're going to put your name in, and you can. Your all yeah, of you that are watching right now are automatically drawn or are in for the drawing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Anything you need to say, Deb? I really do want to um, say thank you so much for doing the meat of the work in this uh, webinar sandwich. It was um, fun. Reading these, reading these was so much fun. 
so I really it was enjoyed tough. it. It was a tough assignment. It was. It oh, was. Okay, there you go. So only ask you to do the ones that are a lot of fun like this. One. Okay. And if you loved seeing Deb on this webinar, send us lots of love and hearts and comments about it because um, I'm sure we have more consumer webinars, more customer webinars coming up during the year. And of course, we want Deb's great insights as well. So you're not off the hook, Deb. Sorry about that. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Thank you all for being here and uh, hope you guys all pick one of these up, any of the books. They're just so amazing. Great. See you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.